from Phoebus High School in Hampton, WHCS Cable Channel 46 presents Peninsula District Girls Basketball, the Warwick Raiders and the Phoebus Phantoms. Good evening, everybody. I'm Tim Cole along with Bob Hintz. We welcome you to Phoebus High School for this contest between the Phoebus Phantoms at a record of three and four and the Warwick Raiders at a record of 0 and nine. Right now, let's go courtside as Bob has head coach Lamont Walker of the Warwick Raiders. Coach, uh, we appreciate you taking time out to talk to us for the ball game. Tell me a little bit about your team. Well, we're pretty young right now. For the last two years, we were pretty young, and we're looking for good things from these young players as far as just fundamentals and basic basketball. And, you know, and that's where you got to start. If they can't do the fundamentals, the rest of it doesn't make any difference, does it? You're exactly right. You're exactly right. Uh, we're ho I brought another young lady out from the junior varsity, and we're hoping she can help us with the defensive end as far as basketball. Good enough. Well, listen, good luck to you tonight. Okay, thank you good very enough. much. Let's go back to Tim. Warwick looking for their first victory of the season. Currently 0-9 on the season. Let's go back to courtside now. Bob has head coach Tiffany Everett of the Lady Phantoms. Tiffany, I'm glad, you, glad you took time out to talk to us before the ball game. Tell me a little bit about your team. I know they're young. Yes, we're very young. Um, starting three freshmen, a sophomore and a junior. Um, we're experience-wise, we're also very young, even my seniors. So um, we're growing as a team, I'm growing as a coach, and hopefully we'll be successful a little bit this season. Well, I know now you went into a Christmas tournament, come out with two wins. Yes. You figure that that's got to give your girls some some confidence. Yes, definitely, because we were we were struggling a little bit on offense, and once we got our defense going, and I told them the offense would come, and you know, coming out with those two wins, you know, we start off a little slow, playing early in the morning, but you know, those two wins did definitely did us justice. So. Well, good enough. Yeah. Well, good luck to you All right, tonight. thank you so much. And Tim, eat your heart out. Go back to Tim. All right, thank you, Bob. This is, of course, our uh, tip-off game of the basketball season. Want to take this opportunity to uh, wish everyone out there a happy new year. We haven't had the opportunity to bring you a broadcast since back in November. And I uh, hope everyone had wonderful holidays and a happy new year to you, Bob. <coughs> In a different sport, uh, we got through football. We made it through okay, and uh, we're going to have five telecasts for the, uh, as you probably already alluded to. But Tim, we will pick a player of the game from the Phoebus uh, team tonight. That player will receive a plaque and a shirt. The plaque comes from Engraving Inc. They're located at Tab Square on Route 17. For all your engraving needs, contact Jim at 596-8850. Dave Buckwalter is the owner. The shirt comes from the Islander Sporting Goods, and they're located in Pocosin, and they can meet all your sports needs with a full line of athletic goods, both team and individual, equipment and uniforms, plus screen printing. Call Dave Chubb at 868-8467. And the young man out there, the Islander, that does this printing, I want to mention his name, a good friend of, uh, of uh, Andy, and that's Craig Moore. He does all the screen printing out there, so we do appreciate that. Andy Foley, Andy Foley? Andy Foley, Andy Foley. There he is, okay. We, uh, make sure I got my microphone turned up. You're, <laughs> you're coming through loud and clear, Mr. Bob. Oh, good, I'm glad to hear that. About this, a minute before tip off. Well, this will, Tim, this will be a pretty good game because these teams are really kind of evenly matched. The, uh, you went through, the, I'm sure you went through the, uh, the records. Uh, the Phoebus Phantom girls were one and three. They went into a Christmas tournament and, and got two wins, so that'll help them. But these both teams are very, very young, and uh, there probably won't be a real smooth contest, but it'll be a contest that will be very competitive on both ends of the court. The officials for tonight's contest, the lead official is Nancy Martin, and uh, she is joined by Scotty Burnett. They are the two officials, and you see them right there in your picture. Nancy clearly is the prettier of the two. Uh, you notice that. <laughs> I tell you, you without glasses. <laughs> I'm finding my way through here. <laughs> Do want to mention, too, that we'll have both the girls and the boys contests between these two schools. So be sure and stay tuned right here on Channel 46 for the best in high school sports as we kick off or tip off, I guess, is the appropriate saying. But our basketball coverage. We're going to do the uh, national anthem, I think, Tim. That's the rumor. And let's stand for that, Bob. And here it is.
as you see coming out on the floor, is this is the Marine uh, JROTC unit here at uh, Phoebus High School. And as you mentioned, Bob, that is the uh, ROTC unit here, the Marine Corps ROTC unit at Phoebus High School. Got uh, some interesting contests uh, down the road. We are going to have a, a nice variety of uh, competition, although I do see that uh, we've got uh, Heritage a couple of times. Yeah, it, it's, it's the way the schedule works out. You know, we're doing Friday games and uh, trying to pick up the Hampton schools, and uh, we're going to get Heritage, Heritage a couple times. But uh, they're a good team. But I tell you, the team, the game I'm looking forward to is January the 19th, Hampton and Bethel. Bethel beat Hampton regular season first of the year and then lost to them in the tournament that they co-hosted. So that's going to be an uh, interesting matchup. But that'll be at Bethel High School, as a matter of fact. So look we'll forward to that game. We'll also have Heritage boys and girls game at Kickatan, the Hampton-Bethel game that you mentioned, Heritage at Bethel, and then Hampton at Kickatan. So we've got each of the Hampton City schools at least once, and uh, we are somewhat restricted in the number of games that we can do or the teams we can cover because we're restricted only to the Friday night contest. We're about set to have the introductions of tonight's starting lineups. Starting at guard, up by four, freshman number four, Megan. Low. At guard, a 5'6 junior, number 21, Erica Hampton. At forward, a 5'10 junior, number 35, Belinda Cam. At forward, a 5'7 junior, number 15, Shana Huntley. At center, a 5'10 senior, number 55, Karen Mongo. The Raiders are coached by Lamar Walker, Tammy Brown, and Deborah Clark. I, we're not, I don't know if we're picking that up or not, Tim, so I'll let you go through it after they, uh, if you want to, because he didn't take our microphone over with him. Yeah, I think we're coming through pretty clearly. Oh, great. So there are the Lady Raiders. <clears throat> and now the homestanding Lady Phantoms of Phoebus High School. Three freshmen, a sophomore, and a junior. That's a young team, Tim. Well, you know, if you're building, you might as well start with a young team, and uh, especially with three freshmen, you've got four years that these uh, young ladies can hopefully play together. Right. Uh, Coach uh, Everett was over at uh, Nasman River in Suffolk last year. This is her first year here at uh, Phoebus, and as I told you, to eat your heart out, it seems like the Phoebus 
coach since Mike Tannen left has been nothing but a pretty lady. So I know that you would sit back here eating your heart out. Bob Tallon, that name's familiar for some reason. Uh, Mike, it, it, it's, he was here for, it was a few years with a young lady named uh, Lakeisha Fret. Yeah, no, I said uh, Bob Tallon, Mike Tallon, of course. All right, here are the uh, starters now for Lady Phantoms, and we'll get to these since we will not be able to hear them. That's Michelle Russell, number 10, four feet five. Number 12 is Shanika Jackson. 21 is Cassie Austin. Thirty-two is Christina Parrish. And Camille Bell is number 11, your final starter to be introduced. Well, they, she changed on me. We had uh, Janelle Womack as a starter, but uh, she's going to do Camille Bell instead. So uh, well, that's OK, too. She's the one senior on the team, giving them a little bit of leadership out there. And you did hear me correctly. The uh, the first phantom introduced is four feet five. <laughs> so just in case you ever wonder out there, I always love to see some of our more diminutive players in sports. You know, you think you got to be six foot four and 250 pounds to play well, football. It'd be nice if everybody was, but they're yeah. not. So, you know. Well, what's nice is that it doesn't mean you have to be six foot eight to be a basketball player. What well, are you, you looking for? You know, I found it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just hang with me. <laughs> I probably lost my coat or something. I don't know. Oh, uh, a pen's more important right now. All right, we're about set to get this one underway. Good shot of the uh, Ward coaches there. And Warwick will get control of the tap. This is Womble giving that to Love. And we've got a five second call. So the four foot five, it'll make any difference how big you are if you play tough defense, Tim. That's right. Well, Bugsy Mug Mokes always comes to mind. He, he was, oh, uh, and that's the truth. He was uh, in the NBA. I mean, he played in major college and NBA, and he wasn't, uh, what, 5'5", five, 5'6"? Five, five, so. uh, <laughs> but he could, he could sure play. On the attack now, the Phantoms just underway, eight-minute quarters, untouched as she drives the lane for the easy bucket. And that was number 12, Shanika Jackson. So she puts the Phantoms on the board. And it was just not good defense, Tim. They just, nobody picked her up and they just let her drive right to the baseline and just lay the ball in the basket. He was playing a good, uh, uh, tough zone there, trying to. Good feet underneath, offensive rebound, and then we've got a traveling call as the rebound was gathered in by the Raiders, number 21, who I don't have a, uh, what do you got, a 21 here, Bob? For the Raiders? Yep, you don't have one either. So well, maybe we ought to check with our guy down there. We'll do that. We've been slipped in a number that we didn't have a name to go with it. Basketball season wouldn't be the same without that. <laughs> You're right. We'll figure out who that young lady is in another traveling call. So 21 being guarded by 21. Cassie Austin turns it over and gives it back to the Warwick Raiders as they lead two to try the trail two to nothing in the early going here. Game videotaped on the 5th of January, 2001. Cross court pass, top of the key. And the return pass is too tall for Megan Love. Tim, uh, number 21 is uh, Erica Hampton. Instead of 25, we got listed as 25, she's 21. But look at day over 15. I didn't think so, but he said she's 21, so I'm mm -hmm. gonna take his word for it. Okay. All right, pushing the ball up is Michelle Russell. And the ball kicked out of bounds by the aforementioned Erica Hampton. It'll still belong to the Lady Phantoms. Picture looks real strong here at the gymnasium. They, in the years past with the dark floor, it seemed like the picture would be very dark, but they've improved the lighting in the gym last year. Yes, they did. And it seems to be a lot easier to see the game. As a fan, the, the darkness of the floor actually made the room so dark, it was, it was kind of hard to see the players sometimes. Raiders still looking for their first basket. 
And we pay, played almost two minutes. Womble will throw it up. It's short. And uh, on the baseline is the well, she, Raider rebounder. Well, she got the ball, Tim, and into kind of a, a, a skip step without dribbling it. You can't do that. Raiders are picking up full court. Some of them are, some of them aren't. And that'll upset a coach quicker than anything else as you get part of the people playing and part of them not. Good penetration, but uh, unable to keep control of the ball. And the turnover gives it back over to the Raiders. This well, Jackson should have went ahead and shot the ball. Yes, she was she where, where she was. I think that was a better shot than a pass. And that was either a what? short pass or a long shot. I'm not <laughs> sure which. Tonight's contest is brought to you in part by Park Lawn Funeral Home. Nancy, and, Nancy Staten Nancy is State the is man, manager. manager. Yes. And someone else who 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 always sponsors our. That's oh, right. let me think. Let me think. It wouldn't be Zooms. It would be Zooms. Oh, Zooms with six Zooms. convenient Peninsula locations. One near me. Almost out of business because I've been. Oh, look at that three there you go. Been watching my my fried chicken intake, and uh, they've had to lay off some more employees over there at Zooms. No, well, just, Tim, just I also wanted to say, and I, and I send my book, and I'll try to get it out uh, during the quarters. But Zooms is, uh, is sponsoring the uh, Af academic award for the athlete on the girls and the boys uh, basketball team that has shown academic excellence. And at the end of the season, they will receive a plaque at one of the school board meetings. So uh, we do appreciate Zooms and all their support. They have supported. Uh, WHCS and the student athletes for, for many, many years. David Allen does a great job, and we appreciate everything he does for us. And I was making a joke about laying off employees. That's not true. The <laughs> Zoom's up there. Well, is, well the reason neighbor. they may lay them off is because you quit eating. Well, that's the problem. See, <laughs> that, that's where I was headed with that is they, their fried chicken sales have uh, dropped off considerably, although they're still selling plenty of that Sitco gasoline because yes, that's are. where I fill up that tank. That's what I don't know what he said, and I'm not going to ask him to repeat it. Let me see a good look at Tiffany Everett, first year head coach here at Phoebus. All knocked away by the Phantoms, but gathered back in by Megan Love. She'll give it to Womble, and Womble is fouled on the way to the basket. That's the first foul of the ball game. It'll be charged to Christina Parrish, her first. Well, you, you look at. Uh, the, the, the Phoebus coach, uh, uh, Miss Everett, Tim, she is not sitting down. She is prowling the sidelines and uh, is very into the game. And that ball lost good pressure defense, caused the dribble to go out of bounds, and ball goes over to the Phantoms. They lead five to nothing with a little more than five minutes left here in the first period. Michelle Russell. Started by Megan Love, tries to feed it down low, did so, but uh, couldn't hold on to it, and then the, the Raiders get the loose ball. Phoebe's still in that zone, Tim, and they're, uh, they're trying to do some trapping out, out of the zone. It looks like a 2-3. Wombled, but the left-hander no good. Follow shot is also no good, but a foul is called. Penalty, uh, excuse me, the foul rather will be called against Camille Bell. That is her first, and that'll be a shooting foul. And going to the free throw line will be Shiana Huntley, number 15. And she hits. Oh, nice stroke, nice stroke. So the Raiders are on the scoreboard. Watch the replay here. You'll see what precipitated the uh, the foul. Well, maybe you won't. Rebound on the missed free throw is no good. Another rebound. A third rebound doesn't go, but yet another foul. So the Raiders doing a good job of rebounding underneath the offensive boards. And that'll that'll give Coach Gray here quicker than anything else. Is the your team is not boxing out or blocking out or keeping the the uh, offense team away from the, the boards because if they're not getting a, if they're getting a rebound, put them back up, then you're putting them on the foul line if you foul them and you give them shots without uh, any defense. First one is good by Belinda Cam as she wastes no time and does the same with the second one. So three free throws by the Raiders cuts the Phantom lead to two now. Five to three with 4.22 left in the first period. 
The Raiders are just allowing the Phantoms to drive the lane. Unfortunately, the Phantoms aren't taking advantage of it right now. Having lost the ball yet again. So the Raiders will bring it up with a chance to tie or take the lead. Shanika Jackson is uh, very fluid, Tim. But I think she's thinking too much about passing, which your coach wants you to pass. But when she gets into the position where she can uh, shoot that ball, she needs to shoot it. Got a foul called in the backcourt. Missed one on the, on the shot itself. Yeah. The shooter was hammered. Uh, uh, Harrison should have gotten a foul, but uh, did not get the call. And then on the rebound, Shiana Huntley is called for a loose ball foul. Ball is regained by the Phantoms. This is Russell. And she'll try to feed it to her teammate who tried to save it but went back into the backcourt. So over and back is called. And you can sure see the young talent here is, yeah. uh, is just that. It's pretty raw. And, and, and I said it's not going to be a real smooth game, but it's, it's going to be pretty even. And that's, that makes you feel good if, as a coach because you feel like you can learn uh, from your mistakes. But, of course, Phoebus is getting a lot of fouls called in the, this first uh, his first half quarter. And that is the third foul called on Camille Bell. So she quickly gets in foul trouble and she'll check out of the game. And in comes number 24, Janiel Womack. Wobble off the glass oh, and nice good. Nice shot, nice left-handed little pivot. Banked right off the, uh, the board. So each team now with a five-point run. Phantoms had led 5-0, and the Raiders have come back to tie it. Three minutes and 10 seconds left. Three-pointer is good from outside. Oh, she does have a nice stroke. So Jackson gets her second basket. She's got five, and the lead now is three as the Phantoms have hit two three-pointers. Loose ball gathered in by Russell. She's got a, a player on the right wing up and no good, but a foul is called. And at the free throw line will be Jackson, Shanika Jackson. Hey, Michelle did a great job moving, taking the ball down the court, but keeping her head up to see Shanika driving to the basket. Nice, nice pass and uh, could have been a three point play. Now, if you're Stephanie Everett, you've got to be pleased with that because that was a good job of, of moving the ball in transition. Let's see if the the Phantoms can capitalize on it as the first is no good by Jackson. Substitutions coming in. This is Audrey Taylor, number 25 in the game for the Phantoms. And checking in is uh, number three. That's Takeda Harrison. And she's the lady with the ball right now for the Raiders. So one of two for Jackson. Jackson, nice feed for Russell, but she was blocked. Now takes it outside. Soft oh, shot won't fall. Didn't quite get the uh, get the roll, but nice job. But she was under some <laughs> under that basket. Everybody was looming like you in a forest with uh, uh, all redwoods. Loose ball, and we've got contact, and what have we got here? Foul, or at least, I believe a foul has been called. Yeah. That's a young lady just came in, uh, Harrison. Harrison. Yep, she picks up the foul, a loose ball foul. Neither team is in the bonus yet. This one is a half-court pass to Russell. Right side feet for Jackson. Jackson can't get it. Tied up on the loose ball, and a jump ball will take place. Of course, a jump ball is no longer that as you have the possession arrow dictating possession of the ball. Looks like the Phantoms have that arrow in their favor and they'll inbound under their basket. Russell <laughs> hits. She just she tossed it. that bad and, thing. And there. Tim, she doesn't hesitate. That's what I like about it. She doesn't think about a it. shot. It's just all natural. It's uh, I got good rotation on the ball. This has been a game of spurts. It has five uh, nothing, five all. Now six straight points by the Phantoms. A three pointer and a basket and a free throw. Good effort to try and save it on the end line, but it will still belong to the Raiders. Good, good hustle that time by uh, Cassie Alston. 
143 left in the first period. 11 to 5 in favor of Phoebus. Wobble guarded by Russell. Ball is tipped out of bounds. It was last touched by a phantom. I tell you what, I, I'm, I'm looking at uh, a little uh, diminutive uh, Tanika Harrison, Tim. When they put that ball on the floor, you watch before the night out, she's going to take her right off the dribble. She's very quick. This is Wobble. Sporting a blonde do, not dissimilar to Tiger Woods. You see that the other <laughs> Yeah, night? saw that in the interview of the, uh, of the game. Yeah. Loose ball, back come the Phantoms. Ball won't fall for them. Loose ball on the baseline, and then we got a couple of Phantoms fighting over the ball. It'll belong to the Raiders. And that's one case when uh, going down the court like she was, uh, Cassie, if she'd have had her head up, she would have saw that uh, that Michelle, um, yeah, Michelle was wide open. And I was talking about Tanika Harris, and I meant to be talking about Michelle Russell, young lady for the. Oh, that's what I thought. I didn't. Uh, and look at that, <laughs> Russell steals the ball from the taller offensive player Love, but couldn't get it to fall. Back come the Raiders. Womble, no good. And good blocking out underneath. That was an excellent job. Unfortunately, her pass was off the mark. Taken back by the Raiders. We're under 40 seconds but in that, the first. That was a, even though the pass didn't get there, that was a good look that you looked down the court, you saw you had somebody open, you just didn't get the ball to them. But the idea is there, and that will, that will pay fruit later on. Foul is called on Michelle Russell. That's her first. Again, player control foul. 35 seconds remaining in the first period. Womble. Raiders looking to move the ball down to the baseline. Womble will take the long jumper. It's short, but rebounded by the Raiders. Raiders have got an awful lot of offensive rebounds. And we've got a foul in the lane. This will be a two-shot foul. Foul will be charged to Womack, Janiel Womack, her first. I wonder if she's any relation to Anton. That was the first thing that came to my mind. Of course, Antoine Womack, a uh, highly successful football player here at Phoebus High School and enjoying a similar amount of success at the University of Virginia. Had a great season for UVA. And I believe he's got another year of eligibility. Yeah, I think he does. Free throw is no good. Ball knocked out of bounds. They're going to say, no, I, I think Nancy Martin's going to overrule. She's going to say it was knocked out by the Phantoms, excuse me, by the Raiders, but let's see. Well, if it is, they may just go to a, uh, like a jump ball possessive possession change. You see the officials discussing the, the call, and now they do get it right, because I thought that the ball was knocked out by Warwick, quite it frankly. It was, it was. So they uh, discuss it as a good officiating team would and get it right. Russell will fire it up from the corner, no good. Loose ball underneath and a crowd around the ball and a foul with 1.4 seconds left in the period. Foul is going to be charged to Karen Womble of Warwick, so it'll give the Phantoms the quick inbounds. They're going to have to get the shot away immediately, and they don't. Well, she got it away. Uh, took a long time for it, 1.4 <laughs> seconds to play out, but. Uh, well, the ball doesn't start until somebody touches it. Oh, the clock, true. I'm sorry. But. That's right. So we've played one, and our score after one period is the homestanding Phoebus Phantoms 11 and Warwick 5. Our next contest will uh, will find us at Picatan High School next Friday night, the 12th of January, as they will play host to the Heritage Hurricanes, who had uh, just an incredible football season. We want to take this oh, opportunity really? to congratulate the Hurricanes on winning the state championship and just uh, an outstanding team. They uh, they just 
won it and they should have won it. Yeah. It, was, it was one of those cases where they deserved it and they got it. Uh, they beat a good Hampton team twice and deserved everything they got. Yes, they did. They and they just went on to prove to, that what you and I have known for many, many years how strong this Peninsula District is. You look at how many championships have have come from the in the last 20 years just have come from the Peninsula District itself. Sure. It's unbelievable and, and not championships but also teams getting to the final the final two uh, from the Peninsula District it's just been unbelievable. Phoebus Hampton Bethel Heritage Kickatan made it to in Division six mm -hmm. when Kurt Newsom was over they got to the final game. Yep. So uh, you know there's a lot of uh, this is a strong district for football. Yeah she was she yep. was standing back cross court and didn't even realize it. One of those things as a young player uh, your knowledge isn't complete. And uh, had she realized that or known about the rule she was straddling the timeline and uh, ball was brought into the front court and then thrown back to her and over over the line was called loose ball is picked up by the Phantoms. They lead 11 to 5. Second period just underway. Tim Cole Bob Hintz and the Channel 46 group. We're back and off seems like we've been off for a long time it's been almost uh, two months. Well your first week in November right you're right second week in November. Well, I we did, I did uh, I had my surgery on the 25th of October, and that was, and I think we had one or two games after that. And uh, how's your surgery anyway? How's your shoulder? Terrible. Terrible. <laughs> Good. We're ready to play golf then, right? <laughs> yeah. You can still take me. Uh, I still have. I'm still undergoing some treatment with it. So hopefully it'll be ready by the time it starts getting warm. I hope so. Meantime, I'll be glad to take you out there. You <laughs> probably beat me with one arm. <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> No slim you getting slim Tim so that means that you are probably hitting that ball better. Well I got a uh, great gift from uh, from my wife for Christmas. A set of custom made golf clubs. Yo get out of here. All right. I'm outstanding. I'm, I'm went up and had them. Now you have no excuse for playing bad now. I've, you know I've that. been hesitant to say anything about it. Because <laughs> if I if I make it too much knowledge of that then it's it's going to be expected that the game improves. We'll see. Where did she get them? Uh, get them custom made. Clubs are you. Clubs are you. <laughs> Not no. are us. Are you? <laughs> well, I don't know if I want to plug the place, but uh, maybe I should. He's a nice guy. Pro golf discount up there in uh, in Denby. One of my sales reps clients uh, did a great job. I, I'll tell you more about it when we get a chance. It's real right. interesting what they do. First of two free throws is off the mark for the Raiders. That is Erica Hampton. At the free throw line, and she rattles the second one in and out. And the rebound comes out to the Lady Phantoms. Still holding on to a six point lead. They led five to nothing. Wart came back and tied it. And then they've reeled off six straight points and uh, have gone cold since that. Hampton will fire it up. No good. Well, Rebound comes out to well, Phoebus is playing right. a lot of new people out there Tim. They've yep. got uh, uh, number 22 Brown is out there. Number 33 Bryant. Oh you don't want to mention uh, Brown's first name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 13 Wilkins. I'm going to <laughs> Crystal Crystal Wilkins. But uh, 25 uh, Taylor and uh, 24 Womack. Uh, those are easy. Give me some first names here. <laughs> Hey, uh, I told you about the big kid from uh, Phoebus going to talk to me before the ball game. The big tight end. <laughs> yeah. But you messed his name up and he won't come to me. I said, okay. That's Shadid. That's to right. You. Shadid Harris, the big guy. Ain't messing with him. Uh, most big guys are pretty gentle. That's what I'm hoping. <laughs> <laughs> you said that. You said that and looked around. I noticed. <laughs> Veronica Bryant hits both free throws and expands the Phoebus lead now to eight. 615 remaining in the first half. Womble will put it up short and the rebound comes off to Crystal Wilkins. Back come the Phantoms. Nice attempt to get it down below but a good job on defense by Karen Womble to pick it off. Well it really was and that's what something that uh, young Miss Brown is going to learn Tim is the bounce pass will get in there much easier 
but there's something that uh, she'll learn as she plays. Foul is called against Veronica Bryant, number 33 of the Lady Fan. Was that, excuse me, 35? And, and can you update me on that one? I don't have a 35 on my roster for. Oh, no, we don't either, so. We'll get an update on that. And we're talking about Phoebus? Yes, sir. Tanika Monrose misses the first of two for the Raiders. And off the mark on the second one. We've got a lane violation, so they'll do it again. That does not even account as an attempted free throw. So Monrose will get another opportunity. Her team down by eight. And still can't get it to fall. Was that right? I'm looking for a Phoebus number 35, not, not Warwick. Huh? Show me a 35 out there. That's 25. Oh, 25. <laughs> You, you sure your eyes are okay? I know I saw 35. <laughs> yeah, for Warwick. <laughs> well, you needed the exercise. <laughs> oh, three-pointer by number 21. And that's Hampton. Erica Hampton. All right. I stand correct. It wasn't 35. It was 25. <laughs> Audrey Taylor. And number now the Phantoms commit another foul. That's Womack's foul, and they are over the limit. There you see the time yeah. and the score. 13 to 8. And a little light bulb out there. Depending on which court you look at. The other end, the light bulb is out on a different part of the eight. <laughs> In fact, it's out on the zero. That too. Missing the first is. That's uh, what, number five. That's Megan. Uh, no, I'm sorry. That's. Uh, Talika Monrose. Oh, Monrose. You know, I had a pair of glasses that have. <laughs> oh, there they are. Monrose misses both. Just about to get a five second call, and they do. Good job of defense by the Raiders, and the possession error will give it over to the Warwick Raiders. Well, a, a cardinal sin. In basketball, as you drive, you dribble the ball down into the corner and you pick up your dribble and there's nobody to pass to. That's what happened that time. And I'm sure that uh, Coach Everett will explain that to her. Well, as we said, this that is one of the, the nuances of the game. We've got a blocking foul on the baseline. That's that. Who's that on Cassie? It looks like Cassie Olsen. Oh, no. No, it's against uh, Christina Parrish, number 32. And going to the free throw, free throw line is Erica Hampton. She missed oh, her other the, two opportunities. That's the 21 I was looking at. Yeah, that 21, <laughs> not the other 20. Here's the replay. Watch this. You'll see the, the foul coming up right, right there. there. Yeah. Scotty's doing our slow motion tonight. Of course, Scotty Bauer is also the, the director. And oh, we, wait a second. We got somebody else. Wait a minute. Doing Rewind it. the tape. So we don't <laughs> want to be wrong. Don Charles is doing Don the Charles replay tonight. Don is doing the uh, instant replay. Does it. everything. One out of two for Erica Hampton. And the Phantoms cannot get it and they say the ball actually touched off of a work rate when, when she shot the ball yeah so the phantoms will inbound and they finally spot the open player it's a three-point attempt off the mark but it's knocked out of bounds by the Raiders so another chance for the phantoms 440 left in the half Oh, an easy one. Yeah, easy you one. can't do that as a, as a uh, you got to protect underneath that basket. Christina Parrish gets the gift. No one on her. She just stood there and laid it off the back. I can do that one. 15 to 9. Back come the Phantoms. The lead pass left side is just a little too long. Well, you know, but that was a good pass, Tim. I think that uh, 
at uh, just didn't that? come up. Well, that, but Cassie, I think, quit running. Yeah, I, I think she just kind of slowed down a little bit, th thinking that uh, Michelle was going to take it on in and shoot it. But uh, that well, we was do, not the case. Do we have a timeout here? 15 nine is our score. We'll tell you just briefly about this uh, fitting that they do for the custom clubs. First of yeah. all, I don't want to make it sound more expensive and elaborate than it is. What they do is they they test your your swing on a computer. They also give you a multitude of different clubs to determine how you hit the ball. They put a little marker on the head of each of the irons so they can see whether you hit the ball on the sweet spot or the toe or the heel or what have you. And they or if you miss it or if you miss it completely. Yeah <laughs> that too. But uh, it's quite a, a interesting process it takes about an hour and a half to be analyzed and fitted and, and the clubs are then you know set up for your height and your your uh, strength of swing and, and and really to your ability to them. Yeah. Well, you go with a flex shaft or a firm or, or what have you, but uh, very interesting process, and uh, hopefully it'll pay off. It, right down to the size of the grips that they put on the clubs. You know, you go in and buy a set of clubs off the rack. Well, your hand's different size than mine, and it's different size than someone else's. So, all these things play into it. The neat process. So I'll be real. I'm, I've been waiting for the weather to get warm enough to even take them out of the house. <laughs> Since Christmas has been in the 30s. And I heard it's supposed to be 50 something over the weekend, and I yeah. might just sneak out and try to hit a bucket of balls. One out of two for Monrose. Loose ball is gathered in by the Raiders. Another one, no good, as they continue to dominate the boards. Now the loose ball comes out to Russell. She'll drive the lane, shovel it up, no good, but retrieved by the Lady Phantoms. This shot from outside off the mark. Russell with the rebound. She'll fire it up. She's not bashful. She hit it. I tell you, she's within 15 feet of that basket. I and open. I tell her that you got a, a <laughs> green light because she's got a nice little touch on that ball. Seven points she has here in the first half, and that's the difference in the ball game. 17 to 10, three and a half minutes, and the Raiders lose it out of bounds. Good job of establishing position underneath. Just. Christine Parrish, you're right, did an excellent job. Held her ground and uh, caused the turnover by not uh, not trying to reach for the ball. Again, those things that you learn is once you've got your position established, don't move your feet, don't shift, don't reach in. Just maintain your position, and that's what she did and did it well. Raiders down by seven. We approach the three-minute mark here in the first half. Baseline drive, no good, but again the rebound. Offensive rebounds by the bucket full for the Raiders here in the first half. Womble with the left-hander, in and out. Phantoms had it underneath and uh, lost it. So they'll say it still belongs to the Raiders. This is a three-pointer off the mark, no good. Good job of blocking out that time by Veronica Bryant, right side feed, no good, and the rebound taken by Megan Love. Cassie just kind of short armed that. Womble's shot off the mark, but a foul underneath, and it's going to be called against the Raiders, I believe. Yep. That's against uh, Talika Monrose. So the Raiders, that is a player control foul as the uh, Phantoms not in the bonus yet, although they will be on the next foul. Russell swings it to the left side. Shot is up and good. Nice work by the Phantoms. Cassie Austin hits. And now it's a nine point difference. Shot put up quickly, no good, tipped out. And finally controlled by the Phantoms. Foul should be caught. Oh my gracious. <laughs> oh my gracious. How do you not call a foul on that one? Uh, I don't know. Mm, mm, mm. Shanika Jackson was uh, just pushed out of bounds and no foul was called. He said loose ball. I think a foul should be called when one player gains an advantage, and uh, that's what they're looking for. Yeah. 
A little less than two minutes now. Womble off the glass, no good. Left-hander shooting on the right wing. It's kind of an awkward bank for yeah, her. Yeah, it really was. As a left-hander, I can appreciate it. I always like to shoot as I face the basket. I always like to shoot to the left of the basket. It didn't matter. They never went in no matter which side I stood. Kind of like my putts. Phantoms. Nice baseline drive, but uh, couldn't get a little out of control that time. Yeah, had a good idea with it, but it didn't quite look the way it should have. Hampton drives, now kicks it back to Womble. Top of the key to Megan Love. Down in the corner. Shot off the rim. No good. Batted away from behind. No foul. And now, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully a foul will be called. Is he that or it's a first down? I'm uh, not sure First which. and ten or a foul. I'm not sure which. A little ragged. 19 to 10 with one minute and 13 seconds left here in the first half. Zooms with five convenient peninsula locations. Make that six now with the one in Newport News. Sitco gas. We've got Bean Town coffee, Krispy Kreme donuts. They've got those fresh potato, potato wedges, French fried. Oh, Tim, chicken. I'm getting hungry. And right. I know you're getting hungry. You're, 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 you're starting to drool all over <laughs> your score sheet. Starting there. to bl <laughs> blur the, t the, the ink on my sheet. In and out on the second one. And put right back up by uh, Christina Parrish. Rebound and the follow. So a three-point play on that one. As we now hit the one-minute mark. Phantoms up by a dozen. And that's a foul. Oh, my gracious. <laughs> uh, Sonika Jackson got by with one there. Oh, as she did. leveled the Warwick Raider. And uh, Lamont Walker saying, come on, ref, give me a break here. And I can't disagree with them on that no. one. That was as blatant as the one they didn't call the other way. Well, maybe it was a makeup. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. But she pushed her in the back, knocked her over, and she got called for traveling. Yeah, it's hard not to travel when somebody's on your back. A little traveling music, see? Justice is served as Hampton goes the other way and scores. These things tend to even out. 22 to 12. 40 seconds remaining. Put it up. No good. Battle for the ball. That'll be a jump ball as Erica Hampton ties up. One of the Phantoms didn't get a chance to pick up her number before they. That was 21. Uh, 21. Was, that's what I thought. Oh, was for it? the Phantoms? No. For the for Phantoms, it was 21 also? Yeah. So 21 and 21. I think it was. Alston shot. Goes off the rim and out of bounds. The 28.6 remaining in the half. Raiders will get another chance. Anthems knock it out. Still belongs to Warwick. And a reminder, we'll have the boys' contest between these two schools as, as well. Elton Brown will be on the floor for the Warwick Raiders. And the ball belongs to the Phantoms with 9.1 seconds left. Russell. Drives, dishes, no good. And the Raiders knock it out of bounds. So 1.6 seconds remain as the Raiders bring in Shiana no, Huntley. She's not going to come in. No, she's going to keep, because uh, 1.6 seconds, she, he wants to keep that young lady in there. Inbound. Put it up, and the buzzer sounds. No <laughs> foul, no blood, no, no harm. So. Are they calling a foul? No, no I don't think I guess so. Not. All right, we are at halftime. Our score is Phoebus 22 and the Raiders 12. We'll return to Phoebus High School for the third period of action after this brief timeout. And 
we're back here at Phoebus High School as the third period is underway. They, I mean, they say they're going to start at a certain time. By golly, they started. They, they're ready to go. For the Phantoms, they were paced in the first half by a couple of players. Michelle Russell was seven, as did Shanika Jackson. Four points for Christina Parrish and two points each for Cassie Alston and Veronica Bryant. For the Raiders, six points by Erica Hampton. Two points each by Karen Womble and Belinda Cam. One point for Shiana Hundley and Talika Monrose. Uh, Erica Hampton for Warwick just picked up a file, Tim. I want to make sure you got that. Thank uh, you very much. One, referee, the, one of the officials called a jump ball, and the other says no, it was a tackle. First and ten. Three-point attempt. No oh, nice pass. Call it a pass. <laughs> Looked better as a pass. Yes, it did. That was uh, Veronica Bryant getting the receiving end of the pass and putting in the easy basket. And a nice steal. Good anticipation by Jackson. She'll lay it in. Well, Tim, I thought that was number 32, uh, Christina Parrish, that made that basket. Who did I give it to? I don't know, but you didn't say Christina I said Parrish. 30, I said 33. Yeah, it wasn't. It was 32. I'm having a hard time with this threes and twos thing. Well, yeah, well, 33's not out there, Tim. <laughs> I think we need these glasses adjusted. <laughs> I, know. I know you've lost weight, but what happened to your eyesight? <laughs> they, they went along with it. I swear I saw 33. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing the first number and uh, missing the. All right, don't pick on me now. This is a new year. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm just glad it's not me. <laughs> pointing out these minor discrepancies. Let's give the credit where it's due. <laughs> yeah. All right, that one was partially blocked, I think. Womble got the loose ball, now gives it to Megan Lovey. Too strong on the baseline. Hampton turned around. Oh, she just took the ball right out of the hands of uh, uh, number 12 for the Phantoms, and that was uh, Sh Shakina Jackson just took it right out of her hands. I think it's pronounced Janika. Janika, yeah. I think you're right. I got one right. <laughs> Can't get the numbers right. 26 14 Phoebus. Jackson and heavy contact as she drives the lane. Yeah, she was uh, hit pretty hard by Belinda Cam. So Cam picks up the foul, and at the free throw line is Jackson. She was. Two of four from the free throw line in the first half. Phantoms were four of six, while the Raiders hit just five out of 14. And Jackson continues her success at the free throw line. She's three of five. And she has three, six, ten points. And this is the second one. Nice rebound there by Parrish, and she got a rebound again. The basket went in. Is he going to give it to her? He's asking uh, ref referee Martin, did it go in? And they're going to count it. So uh, Cam picks up the foul. And the four miss Christina Parrish, the well, one I've been trying to give to 33. But Tim, she got two offensive rebounds that time. Yeah. So Parrish got the bucket and a chance for the three-point play. And then they uh, put the points on the board. Leave it in. Can't get that one to fall, but got her own rebound. That's three offensive rebounds for that young lady in this series. Jackson tries to feed to Parrish, back to Jackson. A lot of battling going underneath there, and that's a good job of uh, Parrish. Well, I tell you, she's been real aggressive, but uh, you got to like Belinda Cam is, is fight too, and, and that's a good fight. Uh, uh, both of them trying to get position. And Working that low post. Loose ball, who's got it? Finally controlled by Megan 
Lovey. Hampton pushed off, didn't get called for it. And the ball goes out of bounds. It'll belong to the Phantoms. And you see in your picture getting set to come in. I don't have a number 23. I don't on have the a number okay, 23. Good. I wanted to make sure I wasn't misreading the numbers again. Shot from the corner. Hampton with the rebound. Give it out to Womble, and Womble's shot no good. And a tie up underneath as Audrey Taylor for the Phantoms tied up with Talika Monroe's. Twenty three is actually thirty. Okay. So the aforementioned twenty three is Shaniqua Arenas. Twenty nine fourteen as the Phantoms have a little more than doubled the score on the Raiders. Loose ball is kicked out. Jumper short. And speaking of short, Michelle Russell with the rebound. That's her second rebound in the game. And she will back up, put it up, no good. And we've got contact underneath. I think that's on 25. So that would be on Audrey Taylor. It's a couple on Audrey, and it's 4-10 to go in the third period. 29-14, the Raiders behind. Shot is up too strong, good position underneath. And I'm impressed with this uh, Shanika Jackson yeah. doing a good job. Just a little, that was a, a good thought pass was not a, a uh, it's a hard pass to make, a long cross-court bounce pass like that. But uh, yeah, I am too. She rebounds well and, and brings the ball up pretty well. Score still locked at 29-14. Lovey charged, didn't get called for it. And she may have walked before she yeah, charged. She did a little bit of each and then drew the foul, so she was very fortunate there. Jackson picks up the foul. Tim, we will pick a player of the game from the uh, for the Phoebus Phantoms tonight, and that player received a plaque and a shirt. The plaque comes from Engraving Inc. located at Tab Square in York County. Uh, and the shirt comes from uh, Islander Sporting Goods, and they're located in Pocosin. We want to thank Dave Buckwalder of uh, Engraving Inc. and uh, John Roberts of uh, Islander Sporting Goods for their support and helping us recognize a player of the game. Been doing it for a long time, and yes, they really have. appreciate it. Both free throws by Lovey are short. Womble got it for the Raiders. Her shot won't go. And the rebound is finally controlled by Parrish. Now there's a 33 in the game. See, if I knew sooner or later Veronica Bryant was going to get in there. <laughs> well, you've been calling her main yeah. number. The coach says, well, I better get her in there. That's what I heard him say. Heard her say, I should say. That's right. So, number 33, Veronica Bryant at the free throw line. She's hit two of two and misses this one. <clears throat> so, we started our first game of the season at my least favorite place because of the seating arrangements we have here, not because of anything other than that. Get this one out of the way, right? <laughs> Get the broken back out of the way early yeah, in the season. I hear you. I hear you. Tim, yeah. uh, time out call. Do want to thank Zooms because they are going to give an award to the basketball player on each one of these teams this year who has demonstrated academic excellence. Uh, these players will receive a plaque at a school board meeting after the season. We want to thank David Allen and Zooms for their continued support of WHCS and our student, student athletes. Of course, we want to recognize our crew. Do a great job. Had to come here early, and it was it was not warm weather when they were bringing all the stuff in. But of course, uh, we want to thank uh, our uh, our camera people. 
Oh, yeah, look at that. Jerry Gentry, he really looks like he's working hard, doesn't he? Our camera people, Nathaniel Braxton, Susan Bowers, and Ron Baton. Engineer in slow motion, we got Don Chirouse. Graphics and audio, got Andy Foley. And Scotty Bimia Bowers is the director. Speaking of Bowers, there's a Bowers. Yes, Susan. <coughs> and a Nathaniel. Where's Nathaniel? Where's Nathaniel? <laughs> well, I think he's looking out. He wasn't feeling real good. He got uh, got a little upset stomach before the game started. Oh, boy, that's going around too. And uh, let's just hope he can make it make it through the both both games tonight. Got a lot of that stuff going around. Shot is last touched by a. Phantom belong to the Raiders. 3.09 left in the third period. 30 to 14. It's all Phantoms at this point. All knocked out by Veronica Bryant. Number Raiders 33. Number 33. <laughs> Thank you very much. I knew she was going to show up sooner or later. I just, if I keep calling her number sooner or later, I'm going to be right. Doesn't happen often. Oh, nice steal. Nice steal. Steal by 32, Christina Parrish. Christina did a good job getting in the passing lane. Bryant will try, try a three off the mark. And rebounded by the Raiders. Stolen by Bryant. Her shot is short. I got a little race horse, race horse basketball here. Womble hooks it up and it doesn't go. Jackson clears the board. A three on two. Right oh, side. needed to give it back to Jackson. She'd been yep. wide open. Give and go would have worked. That oh, there you go. That's Audrey Taylor who gets her first points of the night. So the Phantoms leading comfortably now, 32 to 14. Baseline oh, nice is good job. by Monrose. Talika Monrose with her first basket. She's got a free throw in the game as well. She's got three. And the score now is doubled, 32-16. Shot open, no good, rimmed it in and out. That one by Sequina Brown. Locking foul call on Jackson. One twenty-seven remaining in the third. 32 to 16. If you join us late, you're watching the Raiders of Warwick being hosted by the Phantoms of Phoebus. Tim Cole and Bob Hintz coming to you from Phoebus High School. This game taped on the 5th of January, 2001. <laughs> I heard a not too far <laughs> down the road. <laughs> That's hard to believe we're already into 2001. 2001. As my grandpa says, uh, you know, they call that aught one back in 1901 and yep. 19, it was aught two and aught one. I guess we well, should we start. Aught two. Aught two. Aught one. Aught one. Something. Aught one. Free throw by Lovey is no good. She is 0 for 4 at the free throw line. And then we've got a foul called. And this one will go against the Phantoms. Cassie Alston called for the foul. So Wobble will go back to the free throw line. And now a 20 second timeout has been called by Tiffany Everett, the coach at Phoebus. Heritage visits Kickatan next Friday night. We will be there for both the boys and the girls contest. Then the following Friday night, that big rematch between Hampton and Bethel. Both the boys and girls contest in that game as well. I tell you, Kickatan has come around. Uh, the the uh, boys team uh, started off real, real uh, suspect, and then boom, they jumped up and beat a good uh, wood. Woodside team. So uh, I think we'll see a good contest there. The girls team is uh, starting to get 
trying to get some co uh, cohesiveness in there. And uh, that, I don't know if, how good a game that'll be because I'm not sure what Heritage has. But uh, looking for some good contests and looking for the fans to come on out to the game and uh, great entertainment. And the price is right. I heard that. You heard that? Heard that. A couple of bucks. Yeah, that's right. Regular price, two bucks. All right, timeout over with. 124 left here in the third. Phantoms led 11 to 5 after one. They led 22 to 12 at halftime and have padded that lead now to 32 to 17. Karen Womble cuts into that lead with her first attempt is good. And no good on the second. Back come the Phantoms. A couple of new numbers in there. Got uh, Crystal Wilkins in there at number 13. And uh, Cassie Alston back in there. Janelle Womack, number 24, also in the game. And a foul on the baseline. Foul is charged to Shaquia, Shaniqua. I'm to get it in. Shaniqua <laughs> Arenas. Got Shaquinas, Shaquiqua, Shaniqua's, Takita, Talika. Shaquita Banana. I've got, we got all kinds of names. <laughs> I'll struggle through them. Well, you do better than I do, Tim, so I, I'm not going to laugh at you. Phantoms being very deliberate now. Less than a minute remaining in the third period. They lead by 14. Shot is good. They worked the ball around and got a nice good look by a 12-footer. Crystal and Wilkins got it and then stole the inbounds pass. And another easy basket for Michelle Russell. So a couple of back-to-back -back buckets. And the lead is up to 18 and stolen again by Russell. The Raiders have gone to the bench about 20 seconds before the period was over with. Mentally. And the buzzer sounds before the shot. Didn't go anyway. So the third period has come to an end. And our score after three, Phoebus 36. And Warwick, 18, and we're going to go courtside real quickly here to Ron Baton. He's got a special deal for us. We did that well. And Ron hates that part of the job. <laughs> Ron told me at halftime, he said, we're going to have a special treat here at the end of the third. Each week now, we're going to try and get the cheerleading squads to... Uh, to do a promo for us. Well, we appreciate that. Working for scale, I'm told. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is, and what is scale? Uh, zero. <laughs> zero on your scale. Reminded that the boys' contest between these two teams, these two schools, will be shown here on Channel 46. Of course, work featuring the, uh, there you see, one of the cute little guys. Look at that. Isn't he cute? He's not too sure about that camera, but he said, okay, I'll wave because Dad's <laughs> telling me to. Right. <laughs> Look at the size of his eyes. They're like, what is that? <laughs> Should I be doing this? It, it, it almost like the first time a uh, young kid sees Santa Claus for yeah. real. You know, the like, eyes get real big. So, whoa, oh, wait a yeah, minute. Like, wait a minute. My, my parents are here, but I'm not too sure about this. So the fourth and final period is underway. Raiders throw it away to start the fourth. Thirty-six to eighteen is our score as we start the fourth. Oh, end. nice drive! Another nice move by Michelle Russell. Well, the Warwick Raiders came out in man-to-man -man that time, and uh, young Miss Russell just just blew right by the competition and laid it in, and then uh, caused a turnover. 
Uh, the Phantoms get it right back. And uh, Lobie will be replaced by Harrison for the Raiders. 38-18, a 20-point lead for the Phantoms. I think uh, Michelle got the got the foul that time. If I'm not mistaken, we'll see. Yep. So Michelle Russell picks up the foul. Player control foul as uh, neither team has uh, hit the bonus yet. Although uh, according to the scoreboard, the Phantoms will be in the bonus the next foul. And the Raiders throw it away. And they're just, uh, they're not getting, work, working the ball towards the basket. They're, they're just trying to play, keep away it looked like. And Peeper says, uh, let's, uh, let's have a work, little quick time out here. 30 seconds. Give me an opportunity to remind you that the fourth quarter is brought to you in part by Park Lawn Wood Funeral Home, where the manager is Nancy Staten and some of the staff at Phoebus High School in your picture. Yeah, to the right there is, uh, in the back on the right corner, is Phyllis Henry, principal here at Phoebus High School. But go ahead, Tim. Well, I wanted to mention that uh, the Park Lawn Wood Funeral Home is conveniently located at the Hampton Center Parkway in North Armstead Avenue. For a tour of their new facility, please stop by or give them a call at 827-4670. Again, Nancy Staten is the manager there. We appreciate our corporate support. And, of course, just before we have a contest, we're on the air. Ronnie Staten comes by and sees me, so I'll make sure that I mention his name. I see. Uh, he's, he knows how to get that uh, publicity. I told him, I said, if you were as good looking as your wife, we might talk about you a little more. <laughs> nice working of the ball down yeah. low for Crystal Wilkins. Easy bucket. Okay, Tiffany uh, Everett's got to be real pleased. This Team started slowly, but they've come to a three and four record, and uh, with a win tonight, would even them up at four and four. Well, Tim, you know what what has happened here in this fourth fourth quarter? The the Raiders came out in a man to man, and this is something that the uh, offense for the the Phantom seems to excel at. Monros called for the foul, so it's bonus time. The Phantoms will get one and one. This Womack, just a freshman, Tim. Janiel Womack at the free throw line. Her first opportunity at the free throw line is successful. Phantoms two of four here in the second half. And Womack misses the second. Yeah, the Hampton shot doesn't go. Loose ball is controlled by Veronica Bryant. And then she is fouled by the Raiders. Erica Hampton draws the foul. So it did. I, I tell you, I'm real, play, real uh, impressed with Veronica Bryant, she's a junior, Tim, but she's very strong. She just went up, took that ball right away from one of the Raiders. There you can see the, the end of that play where uh, the foul was clearly on the Raider. First of the one and one is no good. So the loose ball, last touch by the Phantoms. Work will inbound. Pass is picked off. And the favor is returned by the Raiders. Can't get the bucket to go, though. That was nice anticipation, though, Tim, by uh, Belinda Cam. And an offensive foul is charged to Cassie Alston. Hey. 
Player control. Out of bounds. It'll belong to the Phantoms. 5.51 left in the fourth period. There you see the scoreboard and the score. Left all alone. She couldn't believe it. She was so alone, and she got her own, <laughs> oh, got own her rebound. rebound. And got fouled. Cassie Austin with her rebound and stick back, and she is fouled by Karen Womble. So she get an opportunity at a three-point play. No good. And we've got a foul called on Bryant. Tied up the work Raider, but got an arm along with the ball, apparently. And so both teams now are over the limit and we'll be shooting for the last five and a half minutes. At the free throw line, Talika Monrose. There we are, we're a little shaky and out of focus, but we're there. <laughs> <laughs> shaky and out of focus. I thought that was our normal look. I'll be shaky if you can be out of focus. <laughs> Monroe's hits the first. She'll get the bonus. Nice feed and nice bucket at the other end. I'll tell you, the, uh, the Phantoms for a young team, Cassie Austin got the basket. They move the ball pretty well. They just a little more experience. And there you see a timeout called, 22nd timeout. Raiders were having difficulty getting the ball in, and uh, Lamont Walker, the head coach, called over to the official, give me a timeout. And we're going to have wholesale substitution here for the Phantoms. Run down the. Uh, yeah, let's see what we got in there. We got Sequina Brown, number 22, in there, number, uh, along with 25, Audrey Taylor. We got number 11. 11 is Camille Bell. Uh, 32. 12 is Jackson, and 32 is Parrish. And a bucket at the other end by Takeda Harrison, her first basket of the game. 24 is the difference. Shot won't go. And Wobble with the loose ball brings it back. Loose ball and finally controlled by the Phantoms. Jackson right to the basket. She, she challenged uh, Wobble and said, you don't want to stop me as a foul me. 12 points for Chanika uh, Jackson. And the rebound comes right to the hands of Audrey Taylor. And then she, I believe, is fouled by Erica Hampton. That might be all for her. I've got her as four, and I thought I might have missed one earlier, but I guess I, I did not. Now, this is double bonus time. Yeah. Two shots coming for the Phantoms for the duration. And I believe she did foul out as uh, Hampton comes out of the game. Well, I, I didn't see her put up five. I think she Womble. was being substituted for anyway. Tim. No, that was Womble that came out anyway. Yeah. I, I stand correct. Audrey Taylor misses the first of two. And 
Loose ball tie up and possession arrow will belong to the Phantoms. And another tie up this time possession arrow gives it to the Raiders. 4 11 remaining in the fourth quarter. Forty-seven, twenty-one. Phantoms in a in a zone. First time tonight. Shot is short. And last touched before it went out of bounds by the Raiders. So the Phantoms will have it. Up by twenty-six. Looking to even their record at four and four. Jackson drives and tries and misses. Back come the Raiders. <laughs> Foul called to uh, Sequina Brown, 22. Again, both teams over the limit, so this will be one and one. Davis will inbound. Oh, nice pass inside. Camille Bell called for the foul. That's her fourth. Belinda Cam at the free throw line. Womble checking back in the uh, lineup for the Raiders. Is the story of the ball game. Phoebus with a comfortable lead, trying to get an open person to inbound the ball to, and they finally do. Less than three minutes remaining in the ball game. Oh, nice working the ball around, Tim. Nice uh, baseline screen. Got the, who was that? I got the basket. Brown. Sequina Brown. Yeah, that was a nice job of uh, a feed in there to her. Got to be thinking of players of the game, Tim. Uh, I got a couple of thoughts. All right. What are your gotta, couple thoughts? Got to travel on that last play. Well, I'm obviously leaning towards. Both Michelle Russell and uh, Shanika Jackson as well. You give two. Let's do it. All right. Those are our, our players of the game. Michelle Russell and Shanika Jackson. Now, you know, we, we're going to give shirts out, and I have two sizes of shirts, Tim. I got a, a double X and an X large. Now, that little young <laughs> Michelle going to put that it's extra large. Uh, it's, going, on. it's going to be a night shirt. A night shirt. <laughs> you can wear. I mean, probably drag the floor. <laughs> but uh, be very deserving, both those young ladies. Number ten, Michelle Russell, and number twelve, Janika Jackson. Speaking of uh, Russell, she checks back into the ball game. 
Along with Crystal Wilkins, number 13. And now timeout is called by Coach Everett. A couple of young ladies came in and they weren't quite certain who was supposed to do what. So, yeah. and she said, uh, "Womack is pleading her case, but I, you can plead all you want. Coach knows what you're supposed to do. You listen to the coach." We do want to thank Bill D and uh, his staff over here at Phoebus High School. Uh, Why do we want to thank Bill D? Who's well, he? Who's he? The yeah. athletic director. You don't know Bill? Oh, I know oh, Bill. Oh, you know Bill? Yeah. You and him got. Used things to be going. neighbors. <laughs> things going. <laughs> yeah, you got something going on, That's right? right. You got something going on. But anyway, there uh, he is. speaking of Bill D, there he is, right? There. And you notice that he's constantly trying to figure out what to do. There he's. How do I unwrap that piece of candy that Mike uh, Tyndall just brought me? <laughs> of course, that's Mike Tyndall, the uh, baseball coach over here. Great job. We do appreciate all that uh, Bill has done for us. 148 left in the ball game. Just about got a five second violation and they were able to steal it back and walk with it. Uh, the rule is you can't travel if you don't have control of the ball. Is that yeah. correct? Sir? That's what my. I, I thought that you have to have control to be foul, uh, be traveling. So just, you're right. Just going to say that and that's all. You're not saying that there was no control that time. I didn't say that. I just was <laughs> citing the <a> rule. <laughs> My uh, new approach. To you're this real. Is. You're real sneaky about that, you know. Just Your new approach. Rule. I like it. Yeah. As we will once again traverse to the free throw line, Daniel Womack will get two shots as we're in the double bonus. She is one of three from the free throw line. I think that one of four. Raiders will bring it up with a minute and a half to go. The outcome of the game is no longer in doubt. The final score is the only thing. Three on three. Michelle Russell, nice feed pass oh, underneath. Really nice pass and a good shot by Audrey Taylor. Tim, she was not in real good position underneath the basket, but got her body turned and did a good job. I see a lot of future for these young ladies from Phoebus. They are starting to. You know, the young team starting to look good. We've got a blocking foul on the Raiders. Takeda Harrison called for the foul. 51 21, as you see on your score. On your board there, and 58 and a half seconds left in the contest as Phoebus will improve to 4 and 4, and the Raiders will fall to 0 and 10. Still looking for their first victory. Silly foul in the back court by Harrison, just prolonging the eventual. Two shots coming. At this point, you just let them go. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing to be gained. Uh, you got that right. We have had a parade to the free throw line. I'm surprised we haven't had a number of players foul out. Well, both coaches seem to use quite a few players. Yep. Again, we want to congratulate our players of the game. Number 10, Michelle Russell, and number 12, Janika Jackson. And two of two for Crystal Wilkins on the trip to the free throw line time, 53-21. And 
Rebound. Out come the Phantoms. Ball was kicked out of bounds by the Phantoms. I got to tell you, <laughs> they're down by 22 points, but, but they the don't are stop. Still, they don't stop. <laughs> they're like the ever redder bunny. They just keep coming at you and keep coming at you. <laughs> Coach Walker <laughs> having a heart-to-heart uh, -heart with referee with Nancy, Nancy Martin. Nancy said, hey, Coach, we're just doing the best we can. We call what we see. Got a little string going here for Crystal Wilkins. She's hit three in a row now. This was trying to keep the fans off the court. <laughs> They're not paying any attention to her either. Yeah. And four for four. Four for four. Nice job. She's got eight points in the game, does Crystal Wilkins. Almost stolen by Wilkins. Shot up, no good. Rebound taken by Womack, and she lost it. And she reaches in, and 3.1 seconds. <laughs> we have time for three or four more fouls. <laughs> Don't say that, Tim. Don't say that. Enough is enough. See, Bill D just came over and said, wipe the, wipe the time off the clock. Let's get this thing over. Now they're in the double bonus. So Harrison, with two points, will get two shots. She is over. Oh my gracious. That was rather unnecessary. It really was. Player went by and the Warwick Raider just gave her a shot to the back with her elbow. I, I might have called a foul on that just on general principles. But uh, anyway, I'll just let it go at that. All right, that's going to do it. We want to thank our corporate sponsors, Zooms, with six convenient locations. And the game brought to you in part by Park Lawn Wood Funeral Home. There you see the final score, Phoebus 55 and Warwick 21. For Bob Hintz, this is Tim Cole. Thanks for watching. Good evening, everybody.